Hey everyone, I, I recently sent out an email and a, you know, a Facebook post and tried to get the pulse of the preparedness community about what the most important survival supplies are uh, to everybody in preparedness. And I got back quite a few answers, over you know, 200 answers from people. Uh, some of them surprised me, some of them uh, are exactly what I thought. And a lot of them were a little bit different. Uh, everybody's different, everybody has different needs. So uh, with this video, I wanna do the 12 most important supplies that I found. Uh, but like I said, everyone's different, so it's not necessarily going to fit yours to a T. Uh, there are some that, you know, that will, but a lot of these, you know, it, it really depends on your situation. Uh, the reason I wanted to do this is because there is really no end to the different stuff that we can buy with preparedness. There's a gadget that does this, there's a gadget that does that, there's a gadget that does all three of those or, you know, whatever. There's just so many different things we can buy. And we, we all love, I, I, I do anyway, I love to test them out and see how they work and all that. But nothing beats the core, the, the basic supplies, uh, like a survival knife. You can get all sorts of different types of knife, but nothing beats a good fixed blade knife with a full tank. So, uh, and with a good quality knife anyway. So I wanted to go through uh, and see what exactly other people's thoughts were. Uh, so I got a list of, I wrote the article and it's 12, but there's, there's actually 13 and possibly 14 now. So I want to go through those in a little bit more detail. Uh, I'll leave the link below in the article, uh, to the article. And also, if you have any thoughts or suggestions, anything like that, something that you thought of that maybe I didn't talk about today, uh, leave a comment below the video. Along with all these supplies, too, I want to talk about uh, skills, because I think that's really important. In the article, I call them force multiplying skills. And this is basically because you can have the ferro rod, you can have the fixed blade knife, but if you don't know how to use them, it, it's not going to do you much good. If you've got a ferro rod or a mag bar in your bug out bag, that's great. But if you can't get a fire started with that, if you can barely get a spark going with that, uh, it's not going to do you any good and you might as well not even have it in your bag. So along with these supplies, I want to talk about the skills that go along with them that are force multiplying skills, basically. So the first one I have here is the second most important supply, I think, uh, and a lot of other people think as well, is a fixed blade knife, a good quality fixed blade knife. Something that has, something that's full tank, something that's got good steel, something that's going to withstand a lot of, of wear and tear, a lot of, uh, a lot of work on it. So some of these knives you buy at Walmart may not be the greatest. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to go out and buy the most expensive survival knife there is out there. Uh, I use the Rat 5, which is about 70 bucks. I think I paid like 80 bucks uh, when I got it. But it's a high quality knife. It's it's lasted me. It's done what it what I expected it to do. So it doesn't have to be those three four hundred dollar knives. And you know even the lower cost knives may work. But uh, if you're going to do the lower cost route, make sure you're trying it out. Make sure you you research the different types of steel and and the issues. Uh, with these knives, some of these skills that I that I mentioned earlier uh, that will help you that they're force mul multiplying skills basically. Uh, some of these skills are making sure you know how to sharpen the knife, making sure you know how to care for the knife. That'll also help you determine, you know, the type of steel that you want, which is better. How often you have to sharpen it and all that stuff. Uh, whittling and carving is another one. Being able to make tools like a spoon or a fork. Uh, being able to feather wood. Uh, being able to process firewood in general. Making tinder. Uh, understanding how that all, that whole process works. Uh, can also be used as a self-defense weapon. Uh, can be used for trap building, uh, building snare traps, stuff like that. Uh, can be used for processing animals, small game, uh, large game maybe, most probably small game in some sort of a survival situation. Uh, building shelter, just a whole lot of things. You can basically do anything with a good knife and a lot of skill. Uh, the next one on my list, and this isn't necessarily number three. These aren't really ordered in any sort of order. Uh, the next one I've got is... A good water filter and water filter uh, knowledge, water filter purification knowledge, knowing what type of filter you're going to need uh, for the environment you're in, knowing different methods of filtering water like boiling water, uh, water purification tablets. I do have an article titled Picking the Right Water Filter over at Survivalist Prepper, and it goes through why the Sawyer or the Livestraw 
may not, even though you see it on every single prepping website, it may not be the best filter for your needs, uh, depending on what you're going to filter out. In the high country, if you're in the wilderness, fantastic. It's going to get those protozoa and, you know, the Giardia and the Cryptosporidium and all that. In an urban area, you're going to want something that's going to be able to get maybe pesticides and uh, some chemicals out. No filter is going to be able to get all the chemicals. But in a low country, you're going to need, in a low country situation, you're going to need a different filter than the, the Sawyer Mini or the Livestruck. Uh, some of the force multiplying skills that I talked about on this one are using bleach, figuring out how to clean water using bleach, understanding what it actually does, what it actually removes, uh, finding water, uh, knowing where to find water in an urban area and a wilderness area, a suburban area, all those different places. Have those ideas in your head. Uh, like I just talked about, knowing the difference between a high country filter and a low country filter. Uh, a water storage, and that goes for, you know, water storage at home, as well as water storage in a bug out situation or something like that, making sure you have the, the supplies for that. Um, building a field expedient water filter, understanding the whole filtering process. So that's number two here. Number three, and some of these aren't, you know, exact supplies. And the reason I did this is because some of these are more of categories rather than the exact 12 most important supplies. So uh, the next one I've got here is bug out bags. And like I said, this isn't exactly a supply, but this is more of a place where you put all of your important supplies. Uh, bug out bags, go bags, uh, you know, whatever you call them. Uh, they don't have to necessarily be bug out bags, but these are going to help you organize all of that stuff. It's going to help you be able to grab it, all of your stuff uh, at a moment's notice and do what you need to do. Uh, the next one I have here on the list is fire starting supplies. And as preppers, you've no doubt seen 150 different ways to start a fire, seen 150 different videos on it, read 150 different articles. Uh, but it is one of those important things uh, to think about. Uh, having a Bic lighter is something I always have in my pocket. Uh, Stormproof matches, ferro rod, uh, and knowing how to use it. All those different things. Uh, while the Bic lighter is my go-to when I need to start a fire, uh, I'm not going to be doing some sort of challenge or anything. I want to be able to start a fire. And if that doesn't work, it gets wet, it gets lost. Uh, I have that skill to, to use a ferro rod or a mag bar uh, in my back pocket if I need to. Uh, so those are important too. Learning different ways to start a fire, learning different materials, learning how to build the fire for when you do get that spark, it's actually going to light. It's just not going to fizzle out. Uh, some of the force multiplying skills here are uh, learn, learn primitive fire making skills, uh, friction fire, stuff like that. Uh, learn about the fire making materials, what it's going to take to get that fire to actually combust. Uh, learn about making char cloth. Char cloth is easy to store in your bug out bag, lightweight. Uh, learn the other techniques too, like using a forensic lens or using water to magnify uh, the sunlight to get a fire going. Uh, friction fires, They're, those are a pain in the butt, but you watch some of these videos and it looks really simple, but those are a pain in the butt. Uh, so practice that and see if you can actually do it. If you can't, then, you know, at least you know that you can. Uh, the next one I've got here is first aid supplies and medication. Uh, first aid supplies are important in everyday life as well as a SHTF type situation. Uh, with first aid supplies also come the medications, the prescription medications that you have uh, and all of that, uh, making sure you understand how to utilize the supplies that you have. If, if you've got the basic first aid kit, that's great. If you've got the trauma kit, make sure you know how to use those supplies in the trauma kit. Uh, some of the force multiplying skills on this one are uh, taking first aid classes, learning about this different stuff, learning about wilderness medicine, uh, learning about trauma care and what to do with the supplies that you might have in your trauma kit and knowing uh, how to use those and when to use those. Uh, bandaging and wound dressings, learn uh, different ways to do that stuff. Uh, learn Just basically learn about the supplies you have and how they will be utilized and when they should be utilized. Uh, and most importantly, I think, is understanding your limitations uh, and knowing what you can and can't do. Uh, there's also antibiotics for prepping, which uh, some people choose to, some people don't. But if you do, make sure you understand the proper uses for antibiotics. Uh, the next one I've got here is self-defense weapons. Uh, this can be the fixed blade knife or the pocket knife that you carry around with you every day. The fixed blade knife in your bug out bag, the pocket knife in your pocket. 
Uh, it could be some sort of improvised zombie weapons. Uh, it can be uh, knowing karate and or you know military training, having that personal self defense stuff that you can do with your your physical body without the the assistance of another tool. Uh, concealed carry, mace, all that different stuff can be self-defense weapons. Uh, and I think this is one of the most important ones because you just never know in some sort of disaster scenario uh, what's going to what's gonna happen. Uh, some of these self-defense weapons are multi-purpose too. Most of them are. You know, handgun can help with hunting. Uh, survival knife can be used for everything. Uh, zombie weapons are, you know, basically zombie weapons. Uh, and the mace is basically mace. But... Um, Make sure you understand all this stuff. Some of the force multiplying skills or self-defense classes, uh, learning those, the karate, the judo, the jujitsu, all that stuff, uh, learning how to build these different improvised weapons, the zombie weapons, uh, making sure you take some tactical gun training, not just going out to the range and shooting at the targets. Um, go out and learn what it's going to be like, uh, you know, when something's moving and not ju not just a piece of paper sitting there. Uh, the next one I have here is cordage and wire. Uh, cordage and wire is, is really important for a whole number of different situations. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but it can be used for traps. It can be used for building shelter. It can be used for building water filters. Just a number of different things. With uh, paracord and cordage in general, I like to keep at least a, a one solid 100-foot strand of paracord in, in case I need those longer lengths. And then anything that I can put paracord on, I'm putting paracord on. Uh, the, my knife, my zipper pulls, I mean, anywhere that I can think about putting it. Uh, I've got a survival bracelet that I don't wear, but I have one in my bug out bag because that's got, you know, eight or ten feet of paracord. So I uh, also have wire for building snare traps. Jute twine is great. That can be used for fire building as well. Uh, and also... Uh, some of the force multiplying skills and learning how to weave paracord, learning how to do that stuff, um, learning how to build the snare traps, learning how to build the lean-to shelters and the survival shelters, uh, learning how to tie different knots. I think that's the, one of the most important ones is understanding when you are building that shelter, learn how to tie the knots so that shelter is actually going to stay up. Uh, the next one I've got here is multi-purpose items. Uh, and this one includes a lot of stuff like bandanas, the obvious one, the multi-tool, uh, super glue, duct tape, paracord. I mean, there's just so many to mention. The great thing about these multi-purpose items is they you can reduce the weight of your bug out bag by using some of these multi-purpose items. A uh, bandana doesn't weigh all that much, but if you have a couple bandanas, they can be used for a bunch of different things. And maybe you don't need uh, those cravats in your first aid kit or, you know, something like that. Uh, multi-tool is a great tool for just about anything. It depends on the multi-tool you have, but it's got screwdrivers, it's got knives, it's got pliers, it's got everything on there. Uh, duct tape can be used for a whole bunch of different things. Paracord can be used for a whole bunch of different things. So uh, those multi-use items uh, are always some of the most important uh, prepping supplies that we can have. The next one I want to go over here is everyday carry items. Uh, and this one is one that, you know, everybody's got their different stuff and everybody has what they want to carry and what they don't. I think personally, at the very least, you should have a flashlight, uh, some way to start a fire, a uh, pocket knife. Uh, and, it, you know, after that, it's really up to you. Uh, maybe a multi-tool, stuff like that. But uh, in my pocket, I don't like to carry a whole lot of stuff in my pocket. I've got a few things on my keychain, but in my pocket, I... I never go anywhere with having my pocket knife, uh, a lighter, and a ferro rod. Uh, that's just something that I need everywhere I go. Uh, and I'm going to be adding a flashlight to that as well. Uh, so those everyday carry items, you know, these there's just a lot of stuff. I did write an article over at Survivalist Prepper uh, called Everyday, Everyday Carry from Head to Toe, which goes through more than just what you put in your pockets. Uh, you can go to this article at survivalsprepper.net, and then it'll link to that article over there. This article about most important prepping supplies. Uh, the next one I've got here, which which could also be one of the most important. Like I said, this is 12 supplies, 12 of the most important supplies, so it's hard to rate you know, which is more important than the other. Uh, but this one I got a lot of comments on when I was putting out feelers to the preparedness community. And something that I, quite honestly, I almost forgot about. And that's good footwear, uh, keeping your feet healthy. Uh, in any sort of everyday situation or any sort of disaster situation, if your feet are injured or you can't walk, you can't move, 
all of your, your perfect planning just goes right out the window. Uh, you're basically immobilized and it just destroys any plan you have. Uh, so making sure you have those good hiking boots, making sure you're keeping your feet uh, dry, healthy, and warm uh, in a situation, making, your, making sure you have some moleskin in your bug out bag, all that stuff super important. Uh, don't go with the Walmart hiking boots just because they look like the, the top brand, the Merrells or something like that. Uh, because after a few miles, uh, you're going to be wishing you didn't. So that's, this is one of those areas you really don't want to skimp on. Make sure you get some good shoes that are, that are going to be able to withstand a lot of walking. Uh, make sure you have the socks and everything to keep your feet healthy as well. Warm. I suggest having uh, a pair of wool socks in everyone's bug out bag. Wool socks you don't want to wear every day. They get pretty warm, uh, but they are something fantastic to have in a bug out bag. Uh, the next one I have here is survival guides and resources. Uh, there's quite a bit of stuff out there. There's books you can buy. There's books you can find online. If you type in this survival guide PDF, uh, you can probably get a free version. It may be an older version. Uh, print that off maybe or keep it on a flash drive. There's stuff that you can, you find on websites you might want to print off. All of that stuff is really important. Uh, the SAS Survival Guide even comes in a small version like this one here that fits in the palm of your hand uh, that can go in a bug out bag. Uh, these can be pretty tough to find sometimes, but they're, they're cool little books. They don't have the, the detailed information the larger ones have, uh, but they're still pretty cool, cool books. Uh, a couple other that come to mind is Dave Canterbury's Bushcraft 101, uh, getting some, some guides about tying knots. We always forget how to tie different knots. I do it every year when I go fishing. I have to reteach myself a knot. Uh, and then once I figure it out, it's easy. But without that, that guide or without Google, uh, it would be kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, Survival Medicine by Bones and Amy. So stuff like that is all good stuff to have. Uh, the next one on the list here is having cash on hand. Uh, making sure you have a little bit of extra cash in your pocket. Uh, while there are some disaster scenarios where cash is going to be completely useless, for the most part, uh, cash is it's going to hold its value. There's smaller scales disasters. There's natural disasters. There's stuff like that, that that, you know, it could be personal doomsdays. You get stranded in a car. You have to walk home. Maybe the power's out. Maybe the, the ATMs and stuff aren't working, and you need to have a little bit of cash um, to be able to do, do the things you need to do. Maybe get a couple gallons of gas and get back to your car. But having that cash and making sure that it's the smaller bills too. You don't want to just have a $100 bill or a $50 bill in your pocket because if you go to that gas station, maybe you just need a couple bottles of water and a couple granola bars. Uh, if the power's out, they don't have the ATM or whatever, they don't have change, uh, you're going to end up spending 50 bucks on a couple granola bars and some water or you're going to be buying a whole bunch of stuff that you're going to have to lug around. Uh, so having cash on hand, smaller bills, how much you have is up to you, uh, but just have some in case those situations come up. Now one more, and then I'll get into the number one tool. Uh, one more that I didn't have on the article that I didn't have on the list is sanitation items. Uh, this goes for the ladies as well as the men too, because uh, making sure the ladies have the feminine products they need, uh, making sure they are able to do that stuff will... It is not only necessary for them, but it's necessary for us guys too to help maintain our sanity because that's a situation that we don't have to try want to try to figure out the alternatives and what to do when that situation arises. So if we can cover our bases on that one first, we can continue to think about the other stuff that, that we think is important. But that's something that, that we don't think about a lot uh, because you know we're guys and we're thinking about the stuff we think about, but that is something that is absolutely huge in a SHTF situation if you've got a wife or daughters or anything like that. Uh, along with that is the sanitation issues, the toilet paper, and the stuff like that. Uh, that is, it's something that we kind of don't really think about, but I guarantee you it's going to be something you think about on a daily basis when you don't have toilet paper. So all those sanitation items, the hand sanitizers, the soaps, all of that stuff uh, is our important prepping supplies as well. Now, the last one before we get out of here, uh, I just wanted to say that the, the most important prepping supply we have is the one sitting on our shoulders. Uh, it's the one that's going to get us through situations. It's that sheer will to survive any sort of disaster situation. It's that survival mindset. I've got an article over at Survival's Prepper 2 about having that survival mindset, but that is the most important tool we can have. 
And that's why I wanted to include all those force multiplying skills in this is because those are super important. Uh, it, like I said, with the tools we have, that's, that's fine and great, but they're going to be useless if we don't know how to use them. Uh, if we don't understand how to stay out of a conflict, how to get around different situations, all of that different stuff, our mind is the greatest survival tool we have because it can, it, it can get us out of a lot of situations, it can get us through a lot of situations, and having that, that will to survive is going to go a long way, probably a lot further uh, than having, you know, that, that granola bar in your bug out bag or something like that. But anyway, that's it for this video. I went a little bit longer than I wanted to. Uh, if you have any ideas on any of this stuff, make sure and leave a comment below. Uh, even if it's about the same stuff and you just want to elaborate on it, that's fantastic. Uh, leave a comment below. Let everyone know. Uh, you can. I'll leave the link to this article in the show notes below. On this article, like I said, I've got links to the other articles uh, that go into a little bit more detail about each of these subjects. But uh, uh, until next time, everyone, we will talk to you later. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel, and we'll see you then.